Oh, right then, you're the perfect man for the job. So Tyson, I, I thought he was flawless, literally flawless in the first fight. He's going to have a different Wilder now, the Wilder who knows what he's going to come up against. What changes would you like to see from Fury? What changes do you think he'll I implement? Yeah, there's got to be adaptions, you know. The more he can occupy Wilder's right hand, so Wilder likes to have his right hand here when he's going to throw. He half has it already cocked, it's down almost by his waist, so that if I can just touch that glove, or even if I'm not committing with it, automatically you've now got to defend with yeah. that glove, and it becomes high. You're not going to throw a big, strong right hand from here. So just by occupying it, changing it, showing a left hook, coming through the middle, it's now occupied. Just always keep it up, always keep it up. So it's uncocked, always. It's uncocked, he's defensively occupying that right hand. That's going to put, could be a big factor in the fight. And a big factor in any fight is positioning, where the fight takes place. Yeah. The fight's got to take place in the middle of the ring where Tyson can take the distance away from Now, that now. makes sense, but Tyson does quite often volunteer the, the space. He likes to go back against the ropes. Because he he's the taller guy, he likes to sit back in the corners and he likes to do this. But against Wilder, surely that's the wrong move? Yeah, and he didn't do that too much in that fight no. because against somebody shorter, Tyson can sit here, he can hit you and you can't hit him and he can touch, 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 touch and he won't never throw more than two or three shots from yeah. the ropes and then he can turn off and tie you up when he wants to. But in the, against Wilder, you know, obviously as he's taking distance, Wilder's going to keep trying to press, keep trying to press and cutting the ring off. A big factor for me is when Tyson was on Wilder through the right hand and he was throwing it high, Tyson was coming underneath it but then he was missing yeah. the left hook by sitting back out, but then there's an opportunity for another yes. shot. If he can nullify Wilder's attack to, to one or two shots when he throws the right hand, if he can sit underneath it and now smother, tie him walking, walking back, back yeah. now I've got space to play with again. And that, that could be a, 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 a huge factor in the fight. But it's using an entry. Roberto Duran was fantastic at it. He'd use your punch as an entry. Oh, but yeah, so if I, if I if, swing... Yeah, he'd then... use that to then boom, or in Tyson's case, he needs to sit underneath here. But Wilder doesn't throw a right hand on his own. No. If you watch them, them shots back or watch his highlight reel, it's every always, time... Everything comes back with a hook, yeah. yeah. but it always starts with that. Every time, even if he's not throwing okay, it. Okay, so oh. If he uses that every time. If Tyson can defend this by here, underneath, now some other, or when he throws it, throw the jet, one, two. There, underneath the right hand to then smother. Mm. Or he can go straight underneath the jab, actually go to the attack. And walks in back and now I've got space to play with. But Tyson's got the reach where if he does walk in, Tyson can, and that's the ability that Tyson's got, he can punch and move at the same yeah. time, which people don't like to teach that. People teach jab, one, two, but Tyson can step and jab, step and jab. Always, lo always like the front off. foot. And together, he was circling with the jab. So rather than going jab, out, step across, he'll walk and jab at the same time, plank, and then step off, reset, and constantly keep him wild at times. Inevitably, at some point, He's gonna be under pressure. Yeah. He's got he's gonna get he's gonna get caught at one point at one yeah. point of the fight. Not saying he's gonna get knocked down or hurt, but when he does get caught or he does get under pressure or he just gets put on the ropes, the exits, that because I noticed that pivot on the front foot. That when he you know, and you said he's bruised a shoulder, but it's actually when he turns with the foot as well, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. It, it, and it's an important part. And a lot of, you see a lot of young kids wanting to do the, the Floyd Mayweather shoulder yeah. roll. If I do the shoulder roll and I stay here, there's lots of opportunities yeah, to you're hit still me. There, yeah. Or you can clip on the top of the head. But if I'm doing the shoulder roll and I sit tall, and now you throw a right hand, I'm sitting well away from it. Even yeah. if you bowl it over, try and bowl it over. Because I'm sitting back, I'm coming away from it, everything's covered. And even if you do, it slides up, it's sliding away from my head because of the angle. So that, that movement there, is just as important as that, is it? He can use that, but we're talking, like we were talking about a three minute round. If I can nullify you and come into this position, walk you back, the ref says break, the ref says break, yeah. the ref says break, you grab hold of the rope, the ref says break, then you break. You turn a three minute round into a two minute round. Nullifying the engagements, and like David said, when somebody holds that left hand out and, and holds, it, holds it as a post, straight away, automatically, you think, I can't throw my right hand. Straight away, because you know the line of your right yeah. hand isn't there. So even, and, and the first punch that you think of is to go here. Yeah. So even if Tyson's just standing still, but with that there, it automatically takes away his right hand. And by taking this away, there's a few, few ways he can do it. Like I said, occupying this glove where he's got to yeah, focus but, on it yeah. being defensive, giving him a different poise and a different shape where he can only throw to the body. It oh, takes so so you actually hands. give him a target the hit? Give him the target. I can, make, target you, I can, I can, I can make you throw a punch that... I'll, I've made you throw that punch. Yeah. I know you're going to go to my body just by poison. If I stand like this, what are you yeah, going to yeah, do? Of course it's right. yeah, yeah. I've dictated to you what you throw. So when you're doing that, you're almost automatically putting that back leg back. You already know. Once you commit, I can step back. Time. Ben, can I just ask a question? Um, we've heard from the, the Fury camp. Fury wants to try and knock Wilder out this time. 
Does that make him more vulnerable? Yeah, potentially, I can't say that, but there's a difference between trying to knock somebody out and being the aggressor. Yeah, OK. You can knock somebody out by being on the back foot and bringing somebody onto the shot. Something for me that I saw that, 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 that is a, definitely an opportunity to exploit is when Wilder goes into the full guard and Tyson throws the one-two, Wilder snatches back with a left hook. But it's very high. If Tyson can throw the one-two, yeah. sit and come up with almost a lifting left hook, because every time Wilder throws this left hook, this comes here. And it leaves a massive gap here. Okay. Now, so as Tyson throws that and he sits, half a second pause, just, to, just in case something comes up and come up with a lifting left hook in the way Sugar Ray Leonard did against Thomas Hearns, I believe a shot like that will be something that could potentially exploit. But to throw the punches in a combination, I wouldn't like to see, because then you're opening to exchange left hook. So you don't want to see that. No. I wouldn't want to see that. I'd like to see a one-two and then a consecutive punch, which is separate. It's almost like a second phase. So he has his one-two, a defensive movement, yeah. and then his attack. So he's not exchanging left hooks with Wilder. Even though Wilder has to box better than he did the first time, he trying to outbox Tyson Fury, it's just asking for a loss. Mm. And, and for me, for Fury, even though he, he might be able to stop Wilder, to try and go in there to knock him out, to punch with a puncher, the last you want to do, especially Wilder, because whatever the, the height difference, the reach and the leverage he has, the, the reach he has is so long. And more importantly, he keeps that power for 12 rounds, mm. which is, you know, it's not unheard of, but it's very, very rare that he can have that power, the same power from the first round to the 12th round, which makes him you know, one of the most dangerous heavyweights there's been. I guess, really you're saying in a nutshell is for fury to win again he has to dictate the pace i mean to slow it down and quicken it up but more importantly maintain the distance and and be in control of the distance of the two fighters and also wind down the clock fascinating insight fellas thanks a lot